What's up, guys? It's Harry here. In this podcast, we're going to talk about the general markets, world events, and also share some trading stories. Uh, so I hope you guys listen up. I hope you guys enjoy it. It's definitely going to be a good one. What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, we have recurring guest Alex back on, man. What's going on? How you doing? What's up, man? Not much, not much. So I guess we're kind of in fashion that we've been doing. We've just been discussing the markets, overall large caps and small caps. So we'll kind of just dive into that. So kind of lately, Alex, what have you been noticing with the large cap market, overall indexes, all that stuff? Yeah, so it's crazy right now because the market is like, the market is so random, I would say right now. And I think the statistic out there is that this is the, you know, the most drawdown that the market has had in like the last 40 years, right? So essentially it's like we're trading the hardest market in 40 years. So what I've noticed about the overall markets is a lot of people are still uncertain, right? So the market moves in, you know, confidence, right? So for example, when COVID happened, it was the most uncertainty ever because we didn't know if the entire world was going to end. You know, when the financial crisis happened, it was uncertainty because we didn't know if the whole financial system was going to end. And whenever the market digested that news and started to realize that, hey, the world is not ending, there's going to be a cure, there's going to be this, there's going to be that, the market started shrugging off bad news. So what we've been seeing in this market is not that right now. We're not seeing the market shrug off bad news. We're seeing the market, you know, tank on bad news. So until the market starts to digest this news, whether it be inflation, whether it be interest rates, whether it be war in Ukraine, which is insane because the United States is pretty much funding it and, you know, war is its own economy. So as bad as war is for the world, it is great for business, especially from a country like the United States that loves exporting weapons, right? It's a great business for them. So yeah. it's kind of a crazy place right now. A lot of stocks are still getting destroyed. A lot of stocks are still getting clobbered. You know, just recently we had the Bed Bath & Beyond move that went from five to 30 and then back down to eight. The CFO killed himself. Like it's crazy right now, bro. So the market is, even though we're in a bear market, even though it's the hardest market, there's still opportunities to be, making money, it's just not easy. Yeah. I feel yeah. like the, the consensus right now is that a lot of, there are some major names that have bottomed. Um, and like, but it's weird because I think a lot of people feel those names have bottomed, but also like the index and like all that stuff, like has not yet or whatever. And so it's a lot of like, it's kind of a lot of guessing right now. And it's We're like, in the middle of the range. So yeah. we had the all time lows of the short term lows that happened. We had a major, major bounce. I think it was like 10 or 20% in like three weeks. And now we're back in the middle. So based on where we're at in the middle, <clears throat> it's going to take a catalyst to move it up or down. And that catalyst is probably going to be the upcoming inflation number, which I think it might be this week or it might be next week. But there's an upcoming inflation number coming out. And depending on that data of what's going to happen, that is going to dictate which side of the range we're going to go on, the top or the bottom. But the reality is, guys, like, if you're staying alive in this market, yeah. you're probably doing pretty good. If you're making money in this market, you're doing really good. And if you're making a lot of money, then there's really nothing to worry about. Because if you could survive the hardest market in 40 years, you'll be able to survive the next 40 years trading, you know? Yeah. That's why I remind myself. I yeah. agree. I think a lot of people right now, like I get a lot of questions from like kids I went to like high school with or just grew up with and people asking a lot about like portfolio management and like how to build a portfolio because I feel like for the last couple of years, a lot of people were almost afraid of the market because prices were high. I know that sounds yeah. crazy, but like when you looked at Amazon trading at like $2,000 a share or Apple at a couple hundred, 400 bucks, whatever, I think it's scary because most people don't make enough money. They're like, oh, I'm not going to buy one share of Apple one share of Amazon. But now that sure. you know, they've done reverse splits, the market has come way down. I think there's a lot of opportunity. And, you know, for you guys, like, do you find yourself antsy to kind of get in now or more so like get ready to get involved? Or is it hard for you to kind of look at that now while things are so uncertain? You know? So I have a funny story. I'm going to, I'm going to explain two things real quick. So number one is I want to, what I learned very early on is a two ways to make money <clears throat> in America. I don't know if it's the same in Canada, 
Same in Canada, to, but with two, America. <laughs> <laughs> two ways to make the most amount of money in America is real estate and the stock market. That's all I learned. It's very simple. Real estate and the stock market. Okay. So stocks are going down right now. Valuations are at like historic lows. So I've been dipping my toes in long-term, you know, equities and, you know, I'm not buying anything like Zoom or Moderna or shit that like made a parabolic move and came back down. I want to buy the biggest companies in the world, the companies that I use every day, like Apple, like Amazon and like, you know, uh, Google, stuff like that. So I want to put my money there. It may not grow at 80% a year, you know, five, 10% a year. Okay. No problem. Now, what I'm doing now is the interest rates are up. Real estate is starting to come down. It started to be a buyer's market instead of a seller's market. So I'm trying to stockpile as much cash as I can to be able to capitalize on the opportunities coming to real estate in the next you know, three to six months. Additionally, what I did is this is where the funny story is. Additionally, I put like some money aside in like a venture capital fund. So like it's pretty much like the Shark Tank stuff. So you set, let's say, 100K aside. And they'll put, you know, 10K or 5K into 10 or 20 different businesses. 99% of them are going to fail. And the one that doesn't fail and IPOs and whatever, you get to make all your money back plus more. So I checked my venture uh, capital account yesterday. And I looked at it and I almost, I almost spit my drink out because I saw that the profit on that account was $16.5 million on my account. And I was like, what the? Fuck, where's the withdraw button, bro? I want to fucking take this money. <laughs> Call on the scene. I, I, e I emailed them. I'm like, hey, I'm trying to withdraw this money. Where the fuck is it? And they're like, oh, sorry, this is an error. No. Like, That's oh, a big mistake. I thought you just invested in the next I was like, bro, I'll fucking retire, dude. So, like, in reality, it's nowhere near that. It's probably nothing near that. But when I saw it, I was like, oh, shit, bro, this venture shit is the real deal. So, <laughs> I was freaking out yesterday because I was like, God damn, like, that's it, bro. I'm, I'll see you guys on an island, you yeah. know? Yeah, it's like, Mr. Temez, you actually invested in the ring doorbell. I'm trying I'm <laughs> trying to hit that withdraw button, bro, and it would not let me withdraw. Bro, I would have had a heart attack. I'm, I'm an fucking... idiot, bro. Email, and I'm like, where the fuck is my money? In reality, they're like, nah, sorry. That was like a, was like a two-second glitch where, like, uh, they added, like, an extra couple zeros in there, you know? That's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, you're actually at 160,000. Yeah, they're like, you made 150 times your money in six months. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, I was like, fuck, this so is better than meme stock. <laughs> do, do you have any advice for people? Um, so I, had a, I actually had a, a client yesterday. He came in, he's a younger kid. He's like in his 20s. And he said that he got a little bit of an inheritance or something like that. And he got gifted 70 grand, right? And and he asked me kind of what, what, he, his, uh, what my opinion on it was, what to do with that money was. You know, but he was very focused on the idea that he's going to find the next fucking Amazon. He's ex he's so focused that he's going to yeah. find that crazy, the Moderna yeah. growth, you know, some the Zoom growth, everything that went crazy during the pandemic. Yeah. Do you, how realistic do you even think that is nowadays for someone to, like, do you think that gamble is so hard to find that stock in times like this, especially? I think it doesn't. I'm saying 0%, 0% yeah. chance. Yeah, I don't think it exists, bro. Like, dude. The smartest people in the world, right? I'm talking about the hedge funds, billionaires, probably trillionaires, the Saudi prince of fucking Morocco or whatever the hell it is. Like these guys, they hire literally the smartest people in the world to do that job. And the smartest people in the world can't figure it out. So no regular dude is going to be able to figure it out. And if he does, it's probably going to be a lucky trade. It's probably going to be a lucky stock. And the next one that he tries to do is where he's going to lose all his money. Yeah. I mean, the problem is that we became so used to seeing moves like with cryptocurrency, for example, like seeing Bitcoin go from like 2K to 70K and just thinking that that's realistic. And you see how many millionaires or even, I don't, maybe a few billionaires have been made in the last couple of years just by crazy speculative stocks or crypto. Yeah. yeah. You know? The problem is if you don't sell, bro, you can't lock it in. That's the problem. So that's a lot of these guys, they didn't sell. They're up, I don't know, from they made, you know, a hundred thousand dollar investment is now eight million dollars. And now that eight million is now, you know, eight hundred thousand. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, how can you sit there with Bitcoin now? I mean, at this point, <laughs> you're in at 70K and you didn't sell. People are probably panicked and they're just they're going to hold it until the day if it hits zero. It's It'll the same thing as the regular market, bro. The regular it needs a catalyst, right? It needs some sort of reason to keep going up and. In the past, it was the inflation hedge. Everyone bet 
thought that it was the inflation hedge. I even thought it was the inflation hedge until inflation came in crazy and this shit started tanking, right? Yeah. So there needs to be a reason. There needs to be a catalyst. There needs to be something that says, all right, like uh, the United States is now going to accept Bitcoin as legal tender to pay your taxes. I don't know, some stupid shit. They do that. That gives it a catalyst. Okay, now there's actual value. But the reality is that like, I don't really know what's going to happen with these crypto stuffs because right now the government is doing everything that they can to keep the dollar strong. And because they're doing that, it might not be so good for some of these cryptos, you know? Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I think also with your friend who like had the money, what I would recommend my friends do, and this happened like a couple times where they got inheritance and stuff like that. Well, I, I said, take five or six K and go on a really nice fucking vacation and take the rest of the money and just invest it, you know, in like S and P 500 or, or wherever, um, just stuff like that. Because like, if you don't take a little bit of that money and like use it on yourself a little bit, I feel because like, all the time, I feel like the regular advice is just invest every cent, invest 100%, invest 100%. But then like I find like a lot of my friends, like they'll end up like taking money like out of the investments or they'll yeah. do stuff because they it need is. it or they want it. So I was like, take like five or six grand, go on a nice vacation and just invest the rest of the money. That way you actually kind of like use the money for something like, you know, that like benefited you, like it helped like yeah. your mental health. You went on a vacation, you had some fun and then you can say, okay, I went on a vacation with this money and now I'm not going to touch it. And that way it doesn't like tempt you to like go in and be like, oh, well it's been invested for two years. Now I'm going to take it out and I'm going to do yeah. something with it. You know, at least you felt a little bit of the money and yeah. now you're able to kind of, I find like it's a lot easier to let it sit if you've kind of like used it for, for mm -hmm. fun and shit like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Did it whenever whenever people ask me a question like that, to be honest, I always send them that um there's like an article about it. Remember the whole Warren Buffett bet with hedge funds where he was like, you know, the S P index will make more money long term than you guys individual stock picking. Yeah. I always send people that shit. Cause I'm like, the reality is 99% of people, it's all guessing. You know, a lot yeah. of people are seeing stuff like this. And it's, you know, if you can get involved in the I mean, Alex had told me a story a long time ago. There was a trader he knew invested a lot of money just in the indexes <laughs> and yeah. and that's all it takes you know and people get greedy you know they think making you know five percent on the index a year or even the good years ten percent or even a bad year if you're down one percent they're just greedy and they don't understand like oh i want that 100x and it's very hard to do that in today's world and it's the same thing with trading what we do small caps like home run trades don't happen every day it might happen once a month or once every six months you don't know and yeah. it, it's it's just a greedy thing it's not very easy yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wish it was there every day, man. Yeah. I would love to make money like that every single day. But the problem is the it's like you're going fishing, bro. Not every day are you gonna catch a shark. You know, some days you're gonna catch a guppy, some days you're gonna catch a boot, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> boot, some days you're getting seaweed. Some days the shark is gonna pull you into the water and chop off your arm, bro. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you guys think all this so the Europe obviously what's going on in Europe right now with the energy crisis is a serious deal? And I think a lot of people don't even recognize what's really happening over there. Um, how do you guys think it's going to affect over here? Or do you think it really will affect over here? And, and if so, kind of why not? I mean, honestly, bro, I think it's really messed up. I think it's crazy. But the reason why this is happening is like, it's pretty much all on, it's, it's not Russia. It's okay. How do I? So this is all happening because of the war in Russia and Ukraine. It's all happening in the war in Russia and Ukraine because when Russia invaded Ukraine, all the countries, United States, Europe, uh, whatever, are all like, all right, we're not buying Russian oil anymore. We're not buying Russian energy anymore. Fuck you guys. You guys are terrorists. We're not going to help you out. Russia is like, okay, fuck you. Uh, I'm just going to raise the prices, sell it to everyone else, and you guys are all done. So what Russia is doing is they're selling their oil to China. They're selling their oil to india and then india and china are marking it up and they're selling it back to the u.s and europe so technically it's our fault that we sanctioned russia i'm not saying if it's a good or bad decision it was the decision that the administration made to try to combat you know the war putin very smart guy said fuck you uh i'm just gonna raise the prices and destroy your economies and whether you like it or not you're gonna deal with it so i think this whole russia and ukraine thing is pretty much meant to destabilize, you know, the Western economies. Yeah. And I think it's working. 
because China and Russia are partnered up. Uh, they're just buying, buying, buying all the oil. They're selling it back to us for a premium. They're selling it back to everyone else for a premium. And now everyone is destroyed. So the war, I think, is actually a war between the U.S. and Russia to try to get that energy back. And they're using Ukraine as a scapegoat because there's no other reason to be sending tens of billions of dollars to Ukraine unless it's our war. So I think it's our war against Russia to try to help stabilize the energy. But, you know, there's rumors that Vladimir Putin has cancer and like he just doesn't give a fuck. So like the reality is that like whether it be our war, whether it be Putin's evil plan, I think the administration has no clue what they're doing. I think that they're shot to hell. And, you know, no matter what they do, I think this one's going to go to a win for Russia because, you know, our administration is incompetent. They would rather raise taxes and send that money to Ukraine and help cover student debt than fix a lot of the problems that are happening with the supply chains. And you know, don't get me wrong, fixing student debt is fine, but not if you're going to have to print money to cause more inflation to do it. Yeah. Not if you're going to have to take the money out of the people that worked hard, that actually paid back their debts to pay for other people's debts. It's just, I don't know. I think this administration is so out of touch with reality. And to be honest, bro, whether you're left, right, up, down, this guy is not fit to run to be president. And, you know, we're seeing it happen in just two years of how much this country has been destroyed. And the worst part is we still got another two years, bro. Yeah. 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 I, I always recommend people do like a lot of like, I don't want to say their own research, but kind of, I mean, like really look into some of this stuff. Cause especially with like the student loan forgiveness, it was like, I had a lot of friends telling me like, Oh, I'm going to get this money. And I'm like, you do know, like some, not all, some States are taxed on it. Like that is income to you. You know, <laughs> they're going to, that is income tax and all that. And, and I feel like people are, and nowadays they really look in the short term and they don't look at like the long-term effects. Like everyone loves free money, dude, fuck. If someone wants to send me a check, a stimulus check for like 10 grand, I'll take it. But, yeah, bro. My stimulus check was lost in the mail. When yeah. they said it, I never got that shit. <laughs> exactly. Right. But you know, if someone, if I get it, cool, if I had it, sweet. But at the end of the day, I know long-term it's just going to affect us like down the road. And I think people kind of forget like debt matters. Like the, the debt of our country matters. And it's really hard for us to like continue to do all this stuff for people while printing money and without actually putting like actual like things in place to help us going forward and yeah the problem it's it's just a whole big problem bro because like the reality is that like two more years of a bad administration is really really bad because you don't know when the bleeding is going to end right everyone is dealing with higher gas prices everyone is dealing with higher grocery prices Everyone is dealing with supply chain issues. Everyone is dealing with all these same common problems. And instead of trying to fix these problems, the administration is focused on the wrong things. They're trying to buy votes through you know, the student loan forgiveness. They're trying to buy votes by being the heroes of the world, by you know, fighting the war in Ukraine. Well, we got our own war here in America, bro. It's the war of poverty. And they should be fighting that. And printing money for that instead of printing money to send missiles to Ukraine. And that's just my opinion. Maybe uh, people have other opinions. I think what, what's happening in Ukraine is horrible. I think it's terrible. But we're doing pretty horrible and pretty bad here too, man. So I think we need help as well. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree with that. I remember my stimulus check. It's just when you said that it was when it got lost in the mail. Because uh, I never sent that shit to me. I never, I never fucking got anything yeah. from Canada, at least. I, I didn't apply for it anyway, because like everyone I know now is having to pay it back. So all my friends like on their taxes had to pay it back. So I was just like, you know what? Fuck that. I knew that that's what they were going to do. So I was like, do I want to take a loan out for like $2,500 from the government? Not really. So I never fucking did it. Now, I remember I, uh, I went for a walk. Like it was just like with my mom during COVID, like we just wanted to kind of get out of the house. Cause like everything was fucking closed in Canada. Yeah. Like everything was closed. So I was like, you know what? Let's go for a walk. Like trading day was done. And we go for a walk and everyone on my street that's my age, I'm not even fucking kidding, is at the mailbox. And I was like, yo, well, like, why is everyone at the mailbox? Like, what the <laughs> fuck's like I've it's never crazy. seen you guys ever check the mail in my fucking life. And the mailbox is like two doors up. Like I would fucking yeah. like see them checking the mail. And they're like, 
our stimulus checks are coming in. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I was like, holy shit. And the mail lady came, I shit you not, and just handed them their fucking checks. Right it. fucking then and there. I believe it. I um so I I this is a quick funny story. I got a check in the mail and it was for like two thousand dollars or something like that during the COVID pandemic. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, well, I'm not gonna complain about it. So I go cash it and like I go blow it on some dumb chicks. I'm like, you know, thank God I don't really need the money or anything. But I'm like, I forget what I bought. I think I went to the mall and bought some like shoes, clothes, and then like down payment for his I eight. Yeah, and then <laughs> three weeks later. I got a notice in the mail and it was a, just an accident. It wasn't supposed to come to me. <laughs> and they basically were like, it, on your tax return, it just came off my taxes and I had to pay it back. And I was like, man, I thought I got like a quick little break there. I was so excited. <laughs> got- yeah, that's where that Opus One came <laughs> from. <laughs> <laughs> I was pissed. I was like, oh, it's great. But no, I mean, you know, thank God. I, I do encourage people to really like educate themselves on the stock market. And like, that's why I love like my investing club in general, because we we're lucky i'm gonna knock on wood here and thank god everything like we are able to it's basically like an atm machine to make our own paycheck while there are people out there who are struggling to figure out how they're going to afford their houses cars everything like we are able to come to market and make think about someone like steven our travel mob bro he's been killing it dude yeah dude he's been killing it he's just fucking floating around like he's he's everywhere this dude travels all over the world and he just bangs out trades during the day and his or trades are so clean and his risk management is really, really good. And it's like, dude, this guy's just like floating around life, like loving it, you know? And it's, yeah. it's cool, yeah. man. I mean, we're, we're very blessed to be able to do what we do. And, you know, I know you guys have always been killing it. And I know Alex had some pretty massive trades recently and it's like to be able to have this opportunity really is crazy. So I do think we're very lucky and it's good to, always yeah, we it's cool. we're making money in a bear market in yeah. literally the hardest market in almost existence, right? It's the hardest market in our lifetime and we're making money. So if we can make money in the hardest market in our lifetime, then that's a really good sign. Also, one more thing that reminds you of this like tax shit is like some, like most people in whatever industry you are in, in 2021, it was a record year, whether it be in real estate, stocks, uh, manufacturing, uh, sales, whatever. 2021 was an amazing year. A lot of people paid a lot of tax in 2021. 2022, a lot of people have no fucking money. So, and no people are not making money. So you have to assume that the tax revenue that's coming in in 2022 as well is going to be way lower than last year, right? And the United States spends way over their budget. So, it's not looking good, bro. It's really not looking good for us. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's a good point, to be worst, honest. America is the worst money manager in, like, the universe, bro. <laughs> yeah, um, and then after that, it's fucking Canada. I mean, yeah. Canada is pretty fucking bad. I mean, it it's not – it's – I mean, it is just – the the economy here, like, like if you guys go to Burger King, like, like do you – like, is no one working there still? Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not what it used to be. Yeah, because like when I if I like I don't even go to like McDonald's or anything because I have to wait in line like 20, 30 minutes because they have no fucking employees. Like they have no one working. And the people that they do have working are high as shit behind the grill. Like I buddy look at me, he's like I went to um so the other (laughs) and I went to a Dunkin' Donuts, it opens at 8 a.m., which it used to open at 6 a.m. Now it opens at 8 a.m. So I walk over there. And it's just pitch black in there. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I just, I wanted to see how long it took for someone to show up. 30 minutes later, someone shows up. Like you said, he's high as shit, walks into the Dunkin's. And I'm like, I'll take a coffee and like six munchkins or whatever. He gave me 40 munchkins. 40 munchkins okay. <laughs> this dude was lost. And I'm like, this is the workforce right now. But if you see in California, they just put, they're going to pay these people 22 bucks an hour. And I'm like... <laughs> Bro, what the fuck? What is? What are we doing? You know, it drives me insane. It's like everywhere, man. Everywhere's looking for help. We need it. We're we're busy as hell at the barbershops. We need help, but no one wants to work. Everyone's just yeah. chilling. And what are they fucking doing? That's what I don't understand. Like, everyone where did asked. these people fucking go? And I think people just lowered their standard of living because of COVID. Like, I have friends that just got so comfortable sitting at home playing video games. They'll work the bare minimum. It's that whole quiet quitting concept that's like very new, but. Yeah, you, know, you do the bare minimum to stay at your job and not get fired, and then after that, it's like, fuck it. Like I maybe I have a hundred dollars in my checking, but I don't have to work. And- yeah, and the thing is, bro. Like, I think I was telling you yesterday is like, if people don't want to work, 
it almost gives the people that do want to work an edge because all you have to do is the standard, right? If you just do the standard, the standard has now become like overdoing your job yeah. almost because no one else is doing anything. So to be honest, to be honest, I think that for hardworking people, this is the best time to work because the competition is so small. And if you just do a little bit to stand out, you're going to be moving up the ladder very fast. Yeah. Agreed. I think so too. And I think that, I think through this at the end of the day, like as crappy as it is right now, through this, the economy will eventually rebound and all those lazy people will kind of be left in the dust. And they'll, they, you know, it's, it's like, you know, in 2008, there was opportunity everywhere to get real estate stocks, everything. The people that were lazy, they didn't get involved and they're probably still in the same position they were back then. So yeah. this is your chance, but yeah, I mean, stockpile cash, bro. That's what I've been telling everyone is stockpile cash. Get some money ready. You don't know what the hell is going to happen. Maybe we're going to go into a world war. Who knows what's going to happen? But yeah, all you, I know see, is that. Yeah. I don't mean to cut you off. Um, did you see what Elon Musk said about Twitter? Like, I don't yeah, want to yeah, be buying Twitter into a world war. That's some crazy shit, bro. I, I think Musk is going to be on the hook for this shit, to be honest with you. I really. No, I think it's going to happen, bro. I think what's going to happen is they're going to go to court. They're going to reveal that the bots are not 5%. It's probably like fucking 45%. Make the eye. And to make sure that Twitter doesn't get fined up the ass from irregular or improper SEC fines, he's probably, instead of paying $40 billion, he's probably going to pay like $28 billion and get the deal at a cheaper price. Because if Twitter is caught with their pants down, that their bot number is not actually 5%, uh, then they're fucked. They're yeah. fucked and the stock is going to zero. So they'll either take that money or the stock is going to zero. That's brutal. I, I can't wait. I can't wait for the day Twitter. Uh, Elon buys Twitter. I think Elon's awesome. not dumb, bro. The guy's no, the richest man, the smartest man in the world for a reason. And I think that going to court is the only way that Twitter will legally show how many bots are actually there. Because, dude, to be honest, I use Twitter. I've been using Twitter for years and there's bots everywhere, dude. Yeah. Everywhere. Oh, yeah. Bots everywhere. Bro, Twitter, oh, Twitter's brutal. Dude, I have like 6,000 followers or something, right? And I remember one time I made a, a post about masks and something like that. I had like 900 comments flooded into my thing. And I'm like, yeah. they were all like liberal, liberal, like yelling at me or something like that. I'm like, yeah. And most of these accounts, bro, are not real people. They're just no. robots. So all these people. Like, yesterday. What the, what, the guy, what the hell are these guys smoking? You know? <laughs> yeah. That's true. But. And on YouTube too. I mean, like it, and and on YouTube, yeah. it's the worst because I always see them in the MIC comments, and it's like so uh, we have like, like sex robots in the comments. yeah, they're fucking sexual. They like must, they're they must be like following Bow's algo or some shit. Dude. <laughs> Just asking for a friend. What videos are those on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they know the MIC fucking uh, viewership. Half the guys. Yeah, they off. know. They know Bow's gonna keep up <laughs> yeah. his links. Yeah. Jesus. Well, I know we're kind of coming up on like the half hour mark around there, a little longer, but. Um, is there anything you guys kind of want to close with? Um, you know, I think that's it, man. I yeah. think that's it. I mean, to be honest, these podcasts are pretty good. They're pretty fun. And we want, we should probably ask the audience, what, do, what more, what topics do you guys want to hear more about? Do you guys want to hear more about overall markets? Do you guys want to hear more about TV shows? Do you guys want to hear more about like, you know, training? What do you guys want to yeah. hear about? We kind of want to have it as a, you know, not so, uh, not so, concrete straight line type thing where you just want to have it so that it's the most entertaining for you guys maybe you guys can learn something so maybe leave a comment and let us know what type of topics you want us to talk about or maybe comment with a topic that you want us to talk about that way we could kind of go off what you guys want to see perfect yeah, yeah i agree man yeah all right well, that's awesome well thanks everyone yeah. for watching and we'll see you for the next one cool perfect